Wiltshire-based fantasy writer Terry Pratchett has gone for something more upmarket. His state-of-the-art observatory, called the TARDIS, is the fulfilment of a lifelong dream. It also has a more practical purpose. I think I decided to have an observatory built when I just got fed up with having my toes frozen off. Um, the best viewing nights are inevitably cold nights in the winter. And when you have a, a, a telescope on a tripod, you have to get things set up, you have to run electrical leads across the lawn, and you, you have to mess about a bit. And then, just as you've got it right, it starts to rain, or the cloud comes up, and I was just getting so fed up with being cold. You know, I could always tell what, what was going to happen because the gritting lorry would go past on the road. And, and frankly, freezing to death was beginning to spoil the fun. Well, the dome is ash. It was made for me by a superb boat who treated, treated it as a kind of upturned boat. We had to solve all the problems as we went along. Um, I think there's some skateboard wheels in here somewhere. Uh, getting the motor that took a bit of doing, um, you know, all kinds of strange calculations that we had to do about wind speeds up here in case the top of the dome came off. Um, it was really a case of making it up as we went along, but, but making it up out of very good materials, I have to say. Comfortable observatories like Terry Pratchett's meant amateur astronomers could put in long nights of stargazing as they hunted for new discoveries. Indeed, many wanted to emulate George Alcock, the hero of the modern amateur tradition. He was a schoolteacher who made the news in 1983 when he spotted a comet from his Peterborough home. Soon after the British scientists found the comet, the amateur astronomer Mr George Alcock from Peterborough also saw it. Comets are called after the first three people to see them independently. Mr. Alcock was the third, so it will be called the Iras Akari Alcock Comet. George saw the comet as he passed by his landing window with his binoculars. Yes, this was the mat I'm kneeling on. I came and put my wife, you were sleeping in that bed there. Well, not sleeping, no, I didn't put it to bed. I just walked across here, took hold of these. And in a matter of, well, it couldn't have been more than a couple of minutes, I'm kneeling down here. And lo and behold, there it was. So this was Iris Araki Orca. That's it, that's the one. That was the one that was found here. The big one. <laughs> well, it was. It, it was, was a big small comet, but it had a big one because it was near. Yeah, yeah. When Alcock made a discovery, he'd phoned Guy Hurst of the British Astronomical Association, who'd verify it with his own telescope. Guy remembers these calls only too well. It was very exciting uh, because I get a lot of false alarms, as I've already said, and to actually know that somebody with that reputation is reading me is, is pretty exciting because you're going to go outside and perhaps be only the second person in the world to see a new comet. In fact, I do remember one particular incident where he discovered a comet that was fairly bright in binoculars was overhead and the whole world had missed it and we, we to this day it's difficult to know why it got there without anybody noticing it earlier but to actually be the sort of second person in observing it uh, is, is a very very exciting uh, moment really. George Alcock discovered a total of five comets and five novae in his lifetime. It was an astonishing achievement, possible only after years of memorising tens of thousands of stars. Even now, his name is just revered. You know, he knew the night sky better than anybody else, probably anybody who's ever lived, to be honest. I think his trick was that it, the observing became a nightly ritual. You know, like most people say they will, lesser mortals, dare I say, they will sit down at night and they will switch on Coronation Street or they will switch on EastEnders. With him, it was like that. It was night time, he went out. But it was, it was just a ritual. It was, you didn't think about what you were going to eat, you didn't think about what you were watching on television. You got home from school, it got dark, you went out with your binoculars. And so, and, and of course he'd spent six years memorising the night sky. So it, there was no way anybody could compete with him. Nobody else was in that league.